Welcome back to The Big Picture. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang in for Phil Arno. We're talking about business in Amherst specifically with my guest, the president of the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, A.J. Baines, and the senior director of marketing and communication for the chamber, Joanna Facera. So before the break, I told everyone we were going to talk about the, uh, the famous planned <laughs> changes for the malls, both the boulevard and the, the mall that we're in here, Eastern Hills Mall, which is a big topic of discussion and really, really crucial, I think, to the development of uh, Amherst. No, absolutely. I think when you look at these two iconic malls, uh, they are destination areas in terms of people understand where they are when you say the Boulevard Mall or Eastern Hills. We have two developers that now own those parcels, Douglas Development over at the Boulevard Mall, Doug Jamal who's renovating Seneca Tower, Seneca One now, uh, which M&T plans to move into, 43 North is going to be moving in there shortly, and then Eastern Hills owned by Uniland Development. Uh, they've been a little more uh, out in the public with their plans, Uniland Development. I think Douglas Jamal is looking at a longer term play with the Boulevard Mall right now because I, he has his hands full with the Seneca Tower, which is going to be coming online very shortly. And, but with Uniland and over here on the Clarence side of Transit Road with Eastern Hills Mall, uh, the plans that they put out there look more like a lifestyle center. So you're going to have a complete mix of residential, commercial, uh, you'll have restaurants, you'll have a, a community and what you're seeing in other marketplaces. So when you go to Ohio or you go to Florida, that eat, work, live and play concept where you're putting the density of people together so you could have what could amount to 10, 20,000 people in one little area at any given time. And that's the new trend that we're seeing out there in the retail market space. What are they gonna do though about like uh, occupants? Because so many stores and businesses are closing, the, the ones that were in the malls, yep. and malls have become so unattractive. Uh, nationally, what are they gonna do? Well, when you look at retail as a whole, retail was actually up last year. Uh, it, it's kind of a misnomer that retail is dying. Uh, retail is just reinventing itself. And, you know, retail needs to create an experience for the consumer. At the end of the day, you and I like to still go out. We would still like to visit somewhere. You want to hold something. You want to touch it. You want to you want to see what, what it really looks like. It, yes, it's easy to order online and ship it back, and you have the labels, and you can do it quickly, but you still want that experience. So when you look at what retail is doing, it's evolving now. So maybe not the big box retailer uh, who occupies 50,000 square feet. Now maybe you have a, a more personal effect when you go into a retail store, and it's 3,500 square square feet. So it creates, a, again, a sense of community and that's what it comes back to. That's the next generation of shopping. Uh, the internet definitely disrupted the market, but I think what you're seeing is retail is, again, reinventing itself and it's coming back to the table and saying, how do we provide a better customer experience? Uh, the best example I have out there is as a kid, Toys R Us was the greatest store on the, on the planet. I mean, you, you took your kids there, you took your grandchildren there, and they loved it. Uh, when was the last time you got excited to go into that store? So there was a reason why Toys R Us started to lag. And so now when you're looking towards the future, what experience is going to be created? I'm the perfect person to talk about this. Anybody that's watching knows me. I can't buy, I love to go uh, in the store. I can't buy anything online I like to wear or I like to try it on and see it and see how it looks. And I don't know. It's I, kind I of just a no like brainer. it better. Uh, when they're thinking about saving uh, retail and getting people in the stores, they just said, well, let's just make the stores where people live. And then out of convenience, they'll be there. Yeah. So why we didn't think of it sooner, AJ, we should have, <laughs> we should have, should have built our mall, uh, our mixed use mall sooner. But they're all jumping on this bandwagon because it's working. And they have examples in other areas, which is good, sure. you know, where it has succeeded. Um, how, what do you, what do you do or how do you go about getting people, businesses and people, I guess individuals, to join the chamber? What, what benefits do they get? So if you join the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, uh, we have a membership coordinator, Olivia Dan. She's reaching out to the membership that's currently there, but we're also 
utilizing the membership to bring in more members with us. I think they're our greatest asset. They can talk about the positives. They can talk about the connectivity that we're creating with the other members, the business development ideas that are out there, the health insurance end of it. Uh, we are a licensed health insurance broker. We have three of them on staff that full time. Uh, that can be a very uh, difficult Especially task. Nowadays. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's so many different changes out there, and for a small business, that's a, that's a lot of time that they spend on something like that that they want to provide for their employees. So we like to be able to provide that connectivity for them. Um, Joanne, I'm sure you've got plenty. Yeah, so through uh, marketing and communications, um, we assist in social media, how to market their brand, how to keep their brand strong. I had a member who came in last week, and I looked over all their social media platforms and a couple of times they had their name different and I'm like let's let's not do that let's keep it steady things that you know he's he's an upholster that's his thing okay just like some people it's you know making sandwiches or it's uh, having a store with uh, jewelry whatever your thing is sometimes it's not always easy to see the best way to market it keep a strong brand um, and, and, and to appease the customer. One thing you learn in television is what the public likes or what the public wants. After 30 years, I have a little bit of a clue on that because you know we, we serve the public and we know how they respond to things and we know, you know what they're looking for. So all of this um, experience that I've had, I try to share with them because they're just doing what they know best, what they started their business in and that's, the right thing to do. You obviously want to start a business with something you're very good at, but sometimes it's not always knowing the best way to market it or the best way to appear on social media. So, you know, we, we try to help them, give them advice, and then, you know, we have events to connect them with other people so that they can get the word out. We all know word of mouth is still really a great way to build your business, and then we provide that connectivity. That's what AJ was saying as far as getting members too. It's word it's word of mouth. Yes, People absolutely. say they helped me with my you know, with this or that or mm -hmm. I met so and so, you know, the networking aspect and, and that always works too. That that I think. I mean yeah, I, you absolutely. know, I, now it's very confusing to me, and maybe our viewers too, how many different chambers there are all over and how many uh, like in different areas, and if they work together, they have different names. Like Buffalo is called uh, something. The Johnny yeah. Gallagher's group has a different name. Everyone has a different name, and I wondered how if you work together or if you're competing with each other. Or how does it work? Uh, you know, since I've been with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, one of the goals that I've had was to make sure that we're working collaboratively with our brother and sister chambers of commerce. We have done some co-brand events with the Clarence Chamber of Commerce. We've done some co-brand with Lancaster Chamber of Commerce, Kenton Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there's a new Chamber of Commerce in the South Towns, the Boston Colden Chamber of Commerce. I'm going down Thursday for their business awards luncheon. And it's really to create an environment with them that Look, at the end of the day, uh, we want to be working together with everyone. Every area in this community should be clicking, and every area should be trying to grow. And if we do it right, we're going to create a community that is going to attract new people to this area, new jobs, new industries, and that's our goal. We work with Invest Buffalo Niagara. They do so much for trying to attract businesses to Western New York, but we can only attract businesses if we have people here who can fill the jobs. And Northland Center, they're working to put together the technical aspect of it to try to rebuild these buildings, um, you know, putting together the trades that are needed, that are necessary for this community. So when you look at it, we want to work collaboratively with our partners around the area. Um, we're not even just working with the other chambers. We're also starting uh, discussions with Leadership Buffalo because we do a lot with young professional leadership with our Emerging Business Leaders program. Uh, last year we put 40 young professionals through a nine month course in leadership development. It really gave them a 360 review of who they were as individuals. And uh, Leadership Buffalo took notice. Althea, Althea Learson and I are discussing you know, what ways that we can work together in that. Robin did that year, my daughter did that yeah, a while ago, years ago, and it's been, it stayed with her her whole yeah. career, and I think so many people that have been part of that have learned so much. It, it, uh, absolutely, it, it's a great program. We're excited that they want to work with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. We're excited to work with them, 
And I, I think it's just, again, it's a sense of community. And that's what it's all about. I think everybody who lives in this community knows we have a great story to tell, but it doesn't always get told on the national level. I mean, I think first thing anyone wants to talk about is how much snow do you have when you're out of town? Yes, or chicken wings. Or chicken right. wings, or the Super Bowl. I was or, just say, or the Bills. Yep, yeah. or the Bills. And, <laughs> and really, we have some tremendous assets in this community. Uh, we have some hardworking people. We have dedicated people. And I think if we can just continue to attract the business community to this area, uh, you know, we're going to be flourishing for a very long time. I think when we, with the two of you working like this, what, uh, <laughs> it's going to be successful. What if uh, everyone wants to know, Joanna, what you've learned since coming to the chamber? I have learned a lot. Again, as I said earlier, uh, how difficult it can be to run your own business. And um, I think I've also learned just how committed people are in this community to having a strong uh, economic base here, uh, a, a great climate for business. There's a lot of people out there pushing for that. You don't always see that. Our business community isn't always as as, as vocal, but they're, they're there and they want to be heard. And I think this maybe this is an appeal to the media to reach out to the business community a little bit more on issues that affect our economy. They want to have a say. And uh, I think it's great that they all work together. I've seen it at the chamber. We have we help small businesses, but um, AJ has done a great job bringing in large businesses to, to be investors in the chamber and help create the programming and help us pay for the programming that helps the small business person. And this creates a whole environment where uh, the economy is, is, is much stronger. And representing That's Phil, it. this is what he would ask. The, the economy being so strong across the whole country, which we all know, has it affected us? I think you're seeing the growth. Unfortunately, we've lagged a little bit behind on that. And we have some challenges in New York State. There's no doubt about it. But you know what? We are also trying to attract new businesses here, new industries here. And it's just going to consistently be a uphill battle, but it's a battle we're ready to fight. It's a battle that we have been fighting, and it's a battle that we're going to continue to fight. And I think when you look at the stability in the job market here, it's strong. Uh, but we need to plan for longer term. We need to look at the jobs of 2040 and 2050 because that's really the pipeline of talent that we're developing here, and we don't want them leaving to go somewhere else. No, we don't, even though uh, we have all these complaints about the taxes and that you have to over, over, uh, work around, I guess is the saying, yep. uh, in New York. So what can we look forward to? What, do you, what big plan do you have? for 2020? A big plan for the chamber <laughs> is to continue our growth within the chamber. Uh, we are over a thousand member chamber of commerce. We went from 18 investors within the chamber to 57 investors. Uh, those are larger scale companies that help us put on the programming that is necessary. Uh, we are going to continue to work collaboratively. I mentioned earlier the partnership with uh, Leadership Buffalo, we're discussing that. We just had a meeting on diversity with Oshai. Uh, we are making sure that we are in all of the right market spots to grow our membership, to grow the business community, and to really lay down something that is going to be sustainable for the long term future of Western New York. And you and Joanna agrees. Yes, I think <laughs> that part of my job when I came in was to um, increase the profile of the chamber. You can't be an influencer if nobody's listening to you or nobody knows you exist. So my goal would be to continue to increase our profile and show what we can offer, how we're making a difference and growing from there. Thank you. Thank you both so much. It's been Thank you. a pleasure talking to AJ Baines and Joanna Passeri from the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. We'll have the information on the screen. So if you want to become a member and find out more, you can. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Thanks for watching The Big Picture and thanks for watching WBBZ TV. Thank you.